this is my Series 3 E-Type Jag. It's a 1971 and it is a left-hand drive car. So this was imported from the States around about 2021. And I say around about because the paperwork takes a little while to get through and obviously with the documentation, things get kind of lost in translation a little bit. So this was a American car. Obviously it was a shade of white, I think. Um, there is some kind of burgundy underneath, but I'm not sure which is the original color. I'd say the white, because the white is kind of spread all on the inside as well. Here it is then. This is the E-Type Revenge whole idea and concept. Now we stumbled across this late at night while looking at Yassi Designs page and completely fell in love with it. So this in my eyes is definitely the prettiest E-Type I've ever seen. And we need to talk to you about what heart is going into this because it's not just about big flares and big wheels. We need to have a proper heart behind it. So we're looking at putting in a modern F-Type engine and also the running gear and suspension. So that will give us this massive width and something that is also reliable, powerful, and modernized, not only exterior-wise, but also interior-wise as well. So we're looking at probably 600 horsepower, and then all the amenities, air conditioning, sat-nav, you name it, this is going to have it. Now, let's look at the design itself. So the front end is so E-type, it's unbelievable, and that's why I absolutely love this. The kind of face is still there, and it's unmistakable what the car is. It's now got this massive splitter across the front as well, so that works as an air dam, but also it brings the styling all the way down to the floor. These massive front arches though, not only will hide our new modern suspension, which is gonna be a lot larger, but also they enable us to cut really deeply and bring the wheels right up to the peak of the arches as well. So that'll give it this lower stance and then house the bigger brakes. You'll also see these gills down the front. Now that will allow the air to kind of flow in, cool the brakes, but also it will give it better airflow. The rear itself is incredible. So firstly, you'll see the actual rear spoiler, how it flows with the back end. So not only does it come up from the sides and flow from the arches, it follows the boot line across and then back down to the wheels. And I do absolutely love the exposed rear tires because you haven't just hidden the fact that this car's got massive wheels under it. You're kind of showing them off and showing that this is something special. Then we've got the splitter across the rear. So this again brings the body styling all the way down because the problem is with lowering it to the extremities, then where the peak of the actual body line is at the rear, it's still kind of up in the air. So this splitter brings it all down. So now let's start talking about it from a side profile. Now the first thing to look at is actually the front splitter. So you'll see something needs changing here because we can't have a splitter on the floor unless we go for something like air ride. So that will probably be raised up very slightly. Then you'll see again the wheels almost touching that top body line. So we want to really sink this body as low as we can. So we're not afraid to cut into our E-type. The next thing to look at is how the rear arches come out from the door line and then follow all the way out to the wheels and then over into the spoiler. It's a very clever concept here from Yasu. Something you may or may not have noticed is the front wheel and rear wheels are actually different styles. Now, we don't know if we're actually gonna do this. We don't know if we're just gonna keep changing wheels around until we find what we like, but let us know in the comments what you think wheel-wise would look really good on this car. Okay, so now we're at a front lower angle and the car looks so mean from this angle. And that is one thing I don't think I've ever heard an E-Type described as is a mean looking car. But I think Yassi has really smashed it out of the park with this. Now we're looking at the rear again. You can see from these different angles how it really changes it with this software. The front arches, you can now see this bigger air vent down the back. And it's also done a kind of taper as it flows down the body line. Now this isn't something that we're necessarily going to do. And I think it's something that might change when we're actually doing it on the car. It's gonna take a lot of standing back and working out whether that is just quite perfect for the car. So here we are, back round to the front view of the render. And let us know what you think about these wheels. Should they be different front to back? Have you got a personal choice? You think it should be just the fronts or just the rears? And if you've got a wheel that you think would suit this absolutely down to the ground, then send it over. We'd love to know what you guys think as well. 
So let's have a look back round the actual shell in real life and see what we've got to go up against. This is a lot worse than I thought it was. So if I go down to the bulkhead here, so the bulkhead, I've got some major rust, which is just round here and also round here. The top half of it is actually really solid and all the lines and stuff are really good on this as well. And um, the front of the sills is gone here. I was hoping there was gonna be a bit more strength in the sills, but that is what I've got to work with. Also the chassis legs on the front here. So we'll see some, you can see there's some major rot on these front two chassis legs. Again, where this kind of lower bulkhead joins onto it, it's all broken away and we'll need repairing. Right, so this is the, what is going to be the right-hand drive sill. This being a left-hand drive, this would have been the passenger side before. It's a lot worse than I thought it was, so I'm gonna to have to actually skin the outside and possibly the inside as well. Right, so the rear quarters, again, there's gonna be a lot of this actually cut out to make way for the body kit. So these holes here and stuff, it just kind of doesn't matter. And then all of the inner arches and all of the, the workings underneath, again, will be going. So all I need is the rear quarters and the roof from this side. Now we've got the rear. Now, you can see all the bracing and stuff is broken underneath and it's kind of rotted away. So I'm gonna to have to add some structure underneath here. Now, the only thing I'm not sure what to do with um, averse to the actual render itself, I don't know whether to actually skin this and actually do a smaller flip in and out boot lid. The reason being is I'm not a big fan of the kind of flip over sideways boot lid on these. This fuel tank is amazing how it's rotted away though because it's got this huge hole right in the top here and I don't even know how it would have happened. Um, there's more panelling to do around the back here. Again, a lot of it I'm cutting out so I'm not too worried about it but a lot of it is worse than I thought it was going to be. Down here, I've got the fuel filler cap. Again, this is all rotted away. Don't mind that because I'm actually going to be cutting all of this out, welding it up, getting rid of that. I've got a couple of holes here. Again, I'm going to be plating all this, so I really don't mind all of that. Roof gutters. Roof gutters, I love to hate. I absolutely hate roof gutters on cars. So yeah, I'll be flushing all of the roof gutters off. It's something I did on the Mustang and absolutely love the finish of it as well. So this is the worst sill. This sill um, would have been the driver's side, so it's probably actually got a lot worse just with your feet scuffing it in and out. It would have let a lot more water ingress in. We've got a big hole here as well. I think it looks like somebody's actually stuffed something in there. I don't know if I want to put it. Yeah, it looks like a rat's been living in this hole here. So yeah, pretty bad. But again, the body kit will be coming down here. So I'll be able to just put a plate down, put your new sill on, and it'll be absolutely fine for what I want. We've got a big hole here. So the inner sill has actually gone on the car here. And then the outer sill is what's remaining but there's a lot of strength in this upper bulkhead still so it's all repairable and i'll be able to reuse a lot of this metal but it'll give me enough shape again for the render so the plan for today what i'm going to do is i'm going to check my measurements across the doors check my measurements across and make sure it is square and then i'm going to be starting to weld some bracing in okay so what i'm going to do first is i'm going to take two measurements from the doorway the first measure i'm going to do is across the base of the sill here and then I'm going to go and check that on the other side and also I'm going to be taking a measurement from here to here and again I'm going to be checking that on the other side the reason I'm doing that is to make sure because this car is very rusty especially around the sills and floor pan area I want to make sure it hasn't closed up at all because this is the time where I can correct that really easily by just jacking it out very slightly before I weld the structure in, and then all of the added strength I put in, it will hold itself there. So I'll go and check the measurement on the other side. Well, that's a turn up for the box. The lower measurement across this hill here is absolutely bang on. So I'll check my second one. Absolutely perfect. That is to the millimeter, so brilliant. So what I'm gonna do now is I'll start to put a bit of strength across here. So what I'm gonna do, I think, is go diagonally. The reason we use that is triangulation is the key here. So, and as well, I want it to stay out of the way of anywhere I'm working. So I'll probably go from up here and then down to the bottom here. So it'll stop it closing in on itself when I do replace the silk. So what I've got here is one inch box. Now, I tend to use this just because it's very hard to twist. It's not very easy to bend. I always try and get quite a thick wall of this as well. 
and it's quite lightweight and quite cheap to be honest but what you can do then is start to put some strength points in so i'm going to weld here to the base of the sill and then i'm going to look for a nice couple of points to go across on here as well the tricky part about that will be i don't know where the f-type body like the floor pan is going to end up because i know there's a lot of structure behind the seat on it so what i need to do is look for points that aren't going to kind of be in the way so i might end up going kind of again here and across to the front it'll be hard to get in and out of it while i'm obviously welding it up but i think that this part is the bit that's going to want to fold in on itself that's the part that's going to twist this front windscreen versus the rear quarter so locks a box and let's get welding So there we go, I've now got my very own climbing frame inside the E-Type. And it will make it very hard to work around, but they're so, so important to be holding the frame in place. What I always try and do as well is, I always try and get the bars inside the window edges. And the reason for that is, I'm not gonna be altering the window edges on these, so it means that I won't move the bars around as many times. And what I say by moving around is, there's certain times where one of these might be in the way, I might need to cut it off and re-weld it in place in another position. But for now, they're in the best position that I can be to give strength. The sidebars in particular will be moving one more time. And the reason for that is they're in the best place at the moment to be replacing the sills. So I will be doing the sills hopefully on the next episode of this. And those are in the best position for that. But they will be in the way for doing other stuff. But for now, let's just get the sills in. So that is it for this episode of the Anarchy Garage and join us next time while I'll be actually welding sills into the E-Type Revenge.